Park and Lowlands, all the way through um, to high school. But I would say it's all about um, bombarding them with this um, and so it just really takes teachers that are willing to, you know, to, to put it out there or to get you guys to come as guest speakers. Kids love to do things, so anything hands-on that you can bring to the schools is a plus um, as far as community outreach goes. Um, I know that we have several different groups that have come up with guest speakers, you know, and those are great as long as you're speaking to the kids about something that interests them, you know, how many guest speakers can go. And so we ask that you keep it short and sweet, you know, 20, 30 minutes, maybe followed by an activity would be perfect. Um, LSUS does a program called Aspire, and it's basically, and I think they do this at Southwood as well, and I'd have to look back over it, it was just presented to me last week, but it basically it's an after-school program for students that are interested in science to stay, um, and they build rockets, and they, you know, hatch duck eggs, and <laughs> do all kinds of different things, you know, they've got a whole list of these activities that they're wanting to do. So that's another good way, is to, to get the nerves to stay after school, and that's, that's what we're doing. Yeah, mm -hmm. if it's an after school thing, you know, they're gonna be interested. Yeah. You're gonna have a hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. And then it's just a matter of getting whatever it is out that you want message-wise, whether it be promoting LSU or promoting research or, or whatever it is. Um, but, you know, there are programs like that. Not many, but some. And the more that you have, that, that, you know, there's only so many people at LSUS that can do that. So the more we have, the more people that we have, uh, the better opportunity we have to meet kids. Um, and then, of course, there's the initiatives like Five Start and Smart and things like that that um, really push the research side of things, which is, you know, what I think is very important. Tons of kids want to go into medicine, you know. They want to be a nurse, a doctor, a, you know, rad tech. I've got a guy today that's all about medical physics. That's cool. That's great. And so, where, what now? They don't know what to do next. And so, having somebody who's been there and done it in the classroom, that's what I was asking about your backgrounds. Um, it's always nice to say, even as a guest speaker, how did I get to where I am today? You know, if I had to do it over again and I was your age listening to this, what would I do different? That kind of thing. I don't know, we all have those stories, you know. I mean, I wanted to be a dentist. I graduated from high school. There was no doubt. It was all over the yearbook. I was going to be an orthodontist. That was it. And I worked for a dentist that summer, and it was the most disgusting thing I had ever done. <laughs> <laughs> like, You're going to brush their teeth. He's like, it's yeah. called job security. <laughs> well, I don't want that. <laughs> so you never know until you do it. So the more they can get you know, involved, uh, the better. So. Who should we talk to? For instance, um, we... we, we Let's say this group of people mm -hmm. wants to start. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I mean, we can start small at, in Bossier Parish and then kind of extend only because I'm more familiar with the people there. But I am meeting with, um, I'll give you a couple of names. Uh, Curtis Smith is the science coordinator for Bossier Parish. That's his job, his job title. Okay. So he works. On the board level. Yes. Hmm. School board. Um, it's a little different. That's public elected officials that make decisions. He's actually, Curtis is actually employed by the parish to coordinate activities. Um, so science fair activities or that kind of thing. Um, so he would be a good contact on that side of things. He's a classroom teacher, been there, done that kind of thing, and now he's into the administration portion. The other is Jan Graf, and it's G-R-A-F. It's just G-R-A-F. She is a newly appointed science coordinator for Cattle Parish. And I'll be meeting with her just to talk about SMART, you know, if nothing else. But I'll be meeting with her on Monday. Um, but she would be another excellent person to kind of do that community outreach and, and that kind of thing with because um, she's got a lot more schools she's in charge of. I'm sure we have very few, you know. Um, so, and again, it depends on for you guys what your goal is, what age level, for instance. Or are you doing this for grant purposes, or you, you know, or just because you think it's an important thing to do, which is awesome? But well, to be completely honest, yeah. I think that it is both an important thing. Mm -hmm. The science education sure. isn't at it, at it's it, it's strongest <laughs> yeah. now, I'd say. Sure. And second thing, it would look it would look great on the resume. Sure. You know, yeah. you, you apply somewhere and you have right. Right. So it's a win-win for everybody. Yes. I, mean, yeah, I think that's that's important. Yes. So. But age level is go ahead. So like we don't have I, I think everybody in here has a student on postdoc. So we don't have our own money and we don't have our own lab and right. for example, my boss does not want to sign a high school student. That is right. not allowed in our lab. Right. So 
what could I do to interact um, with high schoolers? I think the best way to interact with them would be to reach out to either biology, yeah, you know, teachers. Uh -huh. um, I would love for you guys to come. I have an advanced biology lab class. Okay, it's got a history. It. We taught AP, advanced, you know, the AP mm -hmm. program through College Board or whatever for years. And then about six years ago, we switched for my subjects particularly to dual enrollment. Mm -hmm. dual, enroll, dual enrollment, so they, they yeah. get college credit right. without having okay. to take the test. Mm -hmm. So the grade that I give them is the grade that they get on their transcript. What was done with LSUS, mm -hmm. Dawn Banks works here, and it was her husband, Dr. Banks, from LSUS. And so I taught 110 for a year or two, and then we got the lab component attached. So they would get four hours credit, college credit, for a mm -hmm. science major science. That was the only way I would do it. I said, I'm not doing this if it's 101, and they're going to have right. to take it over again. Yeah. But it was 110. So it was beautiful. worked perfect. 90 kids took it. Tons of kids that took it. That's awesome. Some that don't need yeah. to be there, but to get into 110, same kids you get, um, you had to have a certain ACT score. So that helped. Mm -hmm. AP, there's no requirements. I mean, if you want to take it, you're willing to do it, you just do it. So last year, I co-authored a grant with Dr. Banks to be able to offer the 120. Well, at LSUS, the 120 class is your small stuff. It's the enzymes, and it's the DNA, and it's the cellular part, whereas the 110 is more of a survey class. So we have $50,000 worth of equipment that we were awarded and got. Everything from uh, micro pipettes, just stuff like that. Things that you wouldn't have money maybe to buy right. and purchase, but we have at the high school level. Um, and somewhere along the line, our lovely governor decided that dual enrollment was not important and we didn't want to support it fund-wise anymore. So those funds were cut. Um, so LSUS, instead of offering the class for a, it's still a reasonable price, don't get me wrong, but it's $50 per credit hour. So the students would have to pay $200. Cheap. I got gotcha. you. I know it's cheap, cheap, cheap. But it went from free yeah, right. to 200 bucks. And yeah. now you're talking about how many of those 90 students will be willing to pay, blah, blah, blah. Well, then it becomes an argument between school board and LSUS. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then it becomes political. And then all of a sudden, it doesn't matter what's best for the kid. We're going to yeah. decide, make those decisions. All of this to say we're back to AP which I'm all for, like I said, I did it for years prior too, so I don't mind it at all. But it left me this really weird group of kids this year that had already taken 110, mm -hmm. that I begged oh, to take 120. Yeah. <laughs> so I had them all in here, and now we don't offer 120, so I'm like, all right, what do we want to do today? I mean, it's completely free. And that would be a wonderful class to come and do a lot with. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got this equipment and all this kind of stuff, and I was telling him I have three preps, so I would love the hell <laughs> to be able to come in. But those kinds of things, there are people that have equipment in the high school levels, mm -hmm. and I think reaching out to biology teachers, specifically in high school, would probably be a really good start to say, hey, I'm willing to come work with your kids, you know, for an afternoon to do a lab with them, or if it's not after school, during your during your class period, um, and then the teachers, you know, it gives us help, and also the kids get to see a different face, and that's when you can do some of those question answering about where you went to school and how you got to where you are and that kind of thing. So you can kind of do both. Um, so I would say, starting with the science coordinators and telling them what you're wanting to do, as far as just getting into the high schools and really talking to the students and working with them, and then letting them give you a list of names of. You've got teachers that do and teachers that barely do, and everybody knows that. And so, um, you know, it's it's important to find the right department chairs or the right people that are you know that are really interested in getting different experiences for the kids, not just open them up. Are there any restrictions? Um, I, the only restrictions that I could think of is you would want to make sure you sign into the visitor's office and let the administration know. Seriously, there's just not a lot there. Now, if it's pathogenic or if it's anything, you know, health-wise for the students, then those are questions that you'd have to just address at each time, um, you know, depending. Like, we just don't do a whole lot of, hey, let's go collect bacteria anymore. Yeah. That used to be pretty commonplace and pretty cool lab and all that, but now we're like, mm, mm, it's not always handled the best way. We don't always, you know. We don't all have the equipment that we need to sterilize things and so forth. So, um, so really, I, I would say as long as you keep it safe, you know. But, but no, as far as restrictions go, we all have, you know, probably more dangerous or as dangerous things <laughs> in our lives than you do. So, um, do you have any experience with 
younger kids, middle schoolers? Um, we are starting, and I know in Bossier Parish specifically at Parkway, uh, trying to start outreach from high school to vertical teaming, we call it. So we can start with them in the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade and, and hopefully, you know, make that work into the high school level. Um, personally, experience, I have very little. Um, I did, um, when I first student taught, I did my student teaching at Cato Magnet, and then I um, got a very short part-time sub-position for a uh, science teacher. Hated middle schoolers. <laughs> so, couldn't wait to get out. I mean, I already knew I was going to teach high school, and so very little experience. But I do have friends that teach, you know, middle school, so I can certainly help you with that. But um, I think the younger you get them, the better. I mean, that's just my opinion. Is if you're trying to actually teach them concepts, then really you got to wait until they're old enough to handle it. But as far as just thinking science is cool, that needs to come, you know, as early as we can get it. And to be frank, especially with um, Common Core and some of the other things that are coming through, uh, we don't have a lot of time for science. And it's it's ridiculous. It's sad. So Common Core is an is, um, initiative that our state has signed on to, as, as well as many, many other states, that basically say our kids need to be able to at least do this. You know, so it's setting down some specifics. And it really is cross-curricular. I mean, we use it all the time. It's reading comprehension. It's yeah. students being able to read about an enzyme and, and understand it and not you know, have to have a lot of explanation. So I think since it's just now kind of settling in, that teachers are probably looking for other things that they can do to expand upon that. But um, same thing with elementary school teachers. They don't feel like they have a lot of time in the day to set up experiments and do things because our elementary teachers teach it all. Mm -hmm. You know, they, By the time they get to fourth and fifth grade, they have what's called a switch teacher. Um, so they have math and science for one side, and then the other side is the literature. Earlier than that, they don't. It's all day, let's make it a science hour, and that's it. You know, So they don't have a lot of time to, to do things, and I know that they would appreciate help at that level to be able to come and do some cool demonstrations or um, experience with little kids and things like that. So, I mean, those are all just ideas of what I know so, teachers so, would like. So let's say the science coordinator mm -hmm. for the parish. Yes. It would give us an idea where to go or what to do. He or could, or where there was a need, um, you know, where there was an interest, where there was a need, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, I can certainly email all the science teachers in the parish as easy as he can, so it can come, you know, from either of us. Um, you can start small, see what it's like, and then expound to other ones if you want to stay with just the schools that I'm more familiar with, you know, to start with. Um, but yeah, they would definitely be able to tell you um, where to go. Where to go, what needs are. Yeah. What kind of teachers are really interested in science but may not have yeah. time? No. Or, you know, those kind of things. Yeah, yeah. opposite directly. Right. right. It's, it's difficult to go into a classroom when it's, I mean, the it's going to have to come from the teacher. It's going to yeah. have to come mm -hmm. be their idea. We've got enough stuff that we have to do all day that it's not our idea. Um, and so, we're less and less autonomy as, as the years go on with standardized testing and so forth. Teachers are losing a whole lot of that, you know, ability to be able just to do their own thing. And so I think if it's a student or a teacher that's interested in science, that clearly is going to be your starting jump off point and then go from there. Um, you were talking about the grants mm -hmm. for community outreach. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I don't know about other people in the room, but I'm not aware of it at all. So if, let's say, Rest and postdoc faculty member would like to sign up for it. Mm -hmm. Where should we go? As far as a person who's familiar with the grant writing and education realm of things, even right here is Dawn Banks. Um, she's the education guru, I guess you could say, of the mm -hmm. BRF. And so with the foundation, she's the one that helps to write the grants to get by and start going and, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So she's familiar with grant writing and certainly familiar with education initiatives, way more so than I am. Because um, I'm the community you're trying to outreach to, so I don't write those grants. I write grants for stuff, you know, for equipment. Um, but she would be an excellent kind of person just to bounce some ideas off of. Um, she's on the first board of the BLF, like they love Virginia Lewis. Um, she would be a great um, person. And her husband, like I said, Dr. Banks is an LSU professor. 
he's written, we, like I said, wrote, when I say co-authored, I fell out a few things and signed it. I didn't have to do all of that. <laughs> he had done this for several schools. I mean, we were really getting going with the, with the college stuff. And then our principal called me and said, we're going back to AP. Oh, thanks for asking. I've <laughs> only been doing this 20 years. So. Do you think there's a, an opportunity for us? Not necessarily that I'm more than eager to do that, just yeah. curious if somebody may be interested in that. To come and teach the actual class. Not, not just come and say, you know, I'm a scientist, we're going to... I've actually had Dr. Roscoe come and teach my whole new lesson. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it better than I can, so... Absolutely, yeah, yeah, definitely there's a need there for that. Guest teachers, you can call them, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. And then you can it, then you can put in a demonstration maybe with it or anything that you would normally do to teach a class. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, that would be wonderful. Should we present uh, the program first uh, before to teach the group? I think, no. Because you know, you don't know me, you don't know what I'm going to bring. And <laughs> right, yeah. right. I think a lot of that is going to come with just the trust of who we're working with. I mean, I would I would expect you guys to be able to come in and, and you know have expertise in certain areas and, and that kind of thing. Um, it, it could always be one of those things you could kind of bounce off against a group first or the teacher and, and say, hey, this is mm -hmm. this is my lesson plan. What do you think? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. they can go from there. Do you um, have any standards for like lesson mm -hmm. plans? Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we write lesson plans all day long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I can give you templates, you know, of kind of mm -hmm. what we look for. Um, some of it will be, you know, Greek. It's just language you won't have to use necessarily. But uh, like, for instance, in Bossier Parish, our high school students are on a 90-minute block. So we have 90 minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I always teach in, you know, sections. Mm -hmm. um, if you can't sit for 90 minutes or yeah. you shouldn't have to. Maybe in college you no, can, you but in high school you can't. If and forced. if you're doing it, Bipsy, you better <laughs> think about it. Um, but no, you, you, I, you know, typically do some sort of attention getter or some kind of interest kind of thing, and then we have to present content, you can't get away from it in biology, and then we try to do something. So, just that basic template mm -hmm. of, you know, let me give you some background first, or let me get your interest first, either, like I said, with a demo or a video or, a, you know, some, something like that. Um, with enzymes, you can, you know, cook an egg in front of them with acid, or, you know, there are things you can do to kind of get their attention first. Um, and so other than that, there really is no, no, you know, as long as, and typically it would be, I would hope timing wise, you know, appropriate for, for the class. Um, scientific method and, and real research is always appropriate. Mm -hmm. You can make it fit any lesson, any time, um, you know, because that's what y'all do all day and the kids mm -hmm. don't get that. They don't get it. They don't understand it's a train of thought. And it takes a long time for that to become part of their process. And so the more you do it, the more it's, you know, every single day, okay, what, what's a good question we can formulate from this? Okay, what do you think's gonna happen? All right, how would you test that? And that's just how you have to, you know, and then they don't even know they're doing it. And then it becomes, <laughs> which is the whole secret, you know, it's instead of what are the six steps of this, that's so old school and that's unfortunately still being done. <laughs> But, but yeah, I would say have a topic of interest, you know, maybe each of you as an expert in micro or, or you know, immunology or whatever, and then offer that, you know, offer that to the teachers or to the, you know, um, coordinators and say, hey, look, we have a great lesson on this. Um, you know, we've got a couple people that would like to come by and team teach or if you're uncomfortable coming by yourself, I mean, that's fine too. Um, and they come in and, and uh, you know, do your thing. Students are, is if it's somebody new, you know, it's just not the same old, you know, Monday thing, they're going to typically perk up a little bit and, you know, be interested. There's no telling what they'll ask you, but um, other than that. I have a question which may sound awkward, but, um, you know, I, I interacted with elementary schoolers mm -hmm. and they, very nice mm -hmm. audience, but I had a perception from my personal high school experiences when I was in high school mm -hmm. that high schoolers will eat the uh, new person alive pretty much. I don't know about here. And uh, you know, it, it all depends on the school. It all depends on, you know, like my students don't misbehave because of our administration. 
So, I mean, you, you, like the worst thing that happens at Parkway is, you know, you're tardy for class or you wear the wrong thing or and we just don't have, you know, issues like that. Now, not to say that you don't have schools like that in the true foreclosure. There's no doubt that you will have at-risk students. I think you would be surprised, though, that if you get their interest in the beginning especially and try to not talk too far over their head. Uh, and again, it depends on who you're targeting. You know, if you're if you're wanting to come and teach a lesson, you may want to teach to those honor students or to the students that care, <laughs> that want to hear it, you know, versus the others that you may just want to increase interest in. Um, but no, and the teacher would always be present. I would never suggest you go into a classroom alone. <laughs> I'm going into a cell, but you're not. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's one of those things. The teacher's going to be there, so hopefully they have some sort of control over their class in the first place. You know, and they can keep things down. I mean, my class is, if anybody walks in at any given time, it's, it's controlled chaos. I mean, it's, it's not, if I'm talking, they're listening, other than that, we're doing. And so, you know, it just depends on what your comfort level is there and, and that kind of thing. Uh, but no, I don't think they eat your lunch at all. <laughs> <laughs> and they see all kinds. You know, the students see all kinds of teachers. They see everything from the meek and the mild teachers to the, you know, enthusiastic crazy teachers to the coach that sits behind the desk and they see it all so you know, they'll, they'll be every time I know they would be a part of I don't know anywhere else but um, and I would think that the the teacher would be you know, your friend in that case I don't think it would be a problem what did you think why did did you not like teaching at my uh, middle school um, I really think at that reason? age um, if the silliness the, and I don't mind silliness because my kids are silly too, but it's a different kind of, if you have kids, you know what I'm talking about. It's, um, they don't, they're not capable anatomically, somebody can back me up on this. They're not very capable, I would say that way, of learning at that age because of all the hormones and all the things that are going on and they're growing and they're doing this and they're so distracted. So shorter time frames, you know, um, definitely get their interest in the beginning and then just be willing to look over all the little silly stuff. I don't do very well. <laughs> I do it fine. I just didn't like it. <laughs> just wasn't my thing. But I think middle school is a great place to start. I really do. I, mean, I, I know that those students, the ones that come to me with a really good background, you can pick them out. You know, they know what you're talking about. They've heard of the cell before, for instance. Well, I hope so. You start teaching that fourth grade. But you'd be surprised how many have not, you know, they act like they've never heard it before. Well, it's just because it hasn't meant anything to them yet, you know. Real world applications, wherever you can. Cancer, everybody knows somebody with cancer. That's just a great way to introduce everything from signal transductions to mitosis to you know, cell parts. I mean, everything. So just try to make it you know, as real world, I guess, as you can. Um, but as far as just, I would say, kind of organize maybe amongst yourselves of what your goals are. You know, I can help you with that. But I mean, just, you know, kind of what is it that we're looking to do? If we want to get into the classrooms, um, do we want to do it after school? Do we want to do it during school? You know, do we want to do hands-on? Do we want to do more lecture-based? That kind of thing, and then just go from there. Um, so yeah, speaking of like, so so science classes in school in high school, mm -hmm. they divided in both lectures and labs, or um, no. no, you just have ninety minutes to okay, do whatever you want. Should they be divided? Yes, are they now? <laughs> Um, I pretty much insist or try to as a department chair that, I mean, we fight over the labs that we do have, so it's good, everybody's doing things, but I, you know, just try to insist that they, I, it, you know, we walk by and they're sitting and they're still sitting and they're sitting when I walk back by again, that's a problem. So we try to encourage them to, you know, do things, but um, 90 minutes is just a really long time. And, you know, everybody's, Caddo's different and they have a different schedule and I'm not sure exactly which one they finally decided on this year, but um, they, you know, they've changed over the years, so um, you may find that there's 55 minutes is not enough time really to do a lab or something like that. You may have to split it up or do a couple of days. Um, but the community is definitely willing and ready and, you know, loves the idea of, of guests coming in. I mean, that's, it's certainly never a problem on our own, so, to have guest speakers or, or whatever. How about another question, maybe a little bit out of everybody's field of view, I don't know if, if you encounter that. Is there any other way to do 
the community yeah. outreach, except for the school? Yeah. Um, I would think of community outreach through your churches. Um, you know, you, you have a different group, but you have a more eclectic group, you know, for sure. Um, community outreach at community centers. You know, we have we have YMCA and other community centers that you could probably uh, find. Um, you know, and do diabetes education, for instance, or you know, physical education mm -hmm. and the importance of that. Those are wonderful ways to, to add that, that community outreach from a medical standpoint as well as education standpoint. Um, what about side side port? Port? Yeah. Side port's yeah. fabulous. Yeah. They had like a, a brain mm -hmm. month or something, mm -hmm. and then a whole bunch of people from our department go speak about different lectures. Absolutely. Like and actually, Christian right now, they're doing the teacher brain. thing. So <laughs> not that, that. But they're doing a teacher outreach thing right now at Cyport. Yeah, that, that, I mean, I've been so many times, I don't have to go back, but it's kind of one of those things that it's good for teachers to hear again. Mm -hmm. So I will say this, and I know this is true for Bossier Parish, especially high school, that time out of the classroom is, is limited because we have to have so many educational minutes and so forth, which is the biggest disservice to these kids ever you know the more they get out the more they learn the better it is but that's just not the same perspective I guess they're thinking they need to be in the room and learning all the time and so if you could find um, a situation maybe middle school elementary school on the occasion like my advanced lab I have 90 minutes I can get here in 20 minutes on the bus and do something and go back you know and I have seniors so they don't care about being back after school anyway uh, but if you can get kids, you know, like that and organize something out of side port or something like that, then you certainly can. Or invite and do many schools, you know, invited on an afternoon or a Saturday or a summer workshop, that kind of thing. Those would be different community services you could do. Speaking of side port, just, mm -hmm. I don't know if you know, but Steve Alexander from Physiology, he, he did a lot of projects with side port and Dr. Kleiner, mm -hmm. who worked for pharmacology. She's, she knows everyone. She's no longer affiliated with the university, though. But like, you don't have yes. to talk. Well, it doesn't mean that you cannot talk to her. Right, right. <laughs> now, I will, we do have an education person on staff at Cyport that's employed by Bowdoin Parish. Really? Yeah. Curtis Smith would be able to tell you who it is now because it does change. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's Henry. Mila, I think that's his last name, but I can find out for absolutely sure. But so we do have an educational component or kind of outreach person there that might be able to, to help you and facilitate to get between the students and, and, and that. That's interesting. Um, I mean, we have, you know, as far as other just kind of community things, we've got all kinds of environmental stuff that can be done as far as Shreveport Green and, um, you know, cleanup crew kind of committees, but. Um, yes. Yes. Shreveport Green is a volunteer organization that helps with recycling. Bozier is, I mean, we're behind recycling. Bozier is, it drives me crazy. I have to bring mine every week, but nobody comes to our door to get it like they yeah. get it. Yeah. So prior to that, Shreveport Green was actually uh, made to, to help to recycle and to recycle. But I think they, they we can look, you can probably online and find some information about that, but I do know that they've helped with recycling. That's another just simple outreach type thing that, you know, we can have a recycling day and you know, pick up recycling from schools and so forth. So there's lots of things. I will say this, there is another um, kind of avenue. It's senior project. The seniors in Bossier Parish have to do a project. I know y'all don't want high school students in the lab perhaps, but you could act as mentors on a much smaller scale than SMART, you know, just for something small. I know um, STEM education type projects or um, maybe environmental stuff, whatever your interest is, um, you can, you know, mentor students on that. I have that experience and the, probably the, it, it, it would be, it would look good on the resume, right. because you can put it, you know, and senior project mentor, right. name of the student right. school. Uh, but involvement in the actual project is minimal. Yeah. So it doesn't take a lot of a lot of time for right. you. Because you did Nick. Yeah, I did Nick. Well, Nick was trying to do whatever he could 
what hap what should be is the smart program should count as their senior project. Oh yeah. Period. Yeah. And I fought that from the very beginning because I was on the first senior project committee and I was like, oh this is perfect. Smart would be great. This would be this is perfect. We write a paper, we have seven hundred and fifty community hours or mentor hours instead of twenty. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? And they're like, No, we really need him to do why? <laughs> why so me and Nick it, don't let that pers you know dissuade you because we you know tried to uh, incorporate as much um, no, no, no. smart program as we could. He already does enough. It was one of those really so yeah. Yeah, so it, it but yes, there are more. others that don't know anything. For instance, about you know medicine and research and that kind of thing, they're always asking. It's almost like doing a science fair project with somebody. It's similar along those lines. You know, kind of thing. Um, we do have science fair. Y'all can judge. Great community outreach. Hello, have you gotten your letter already? I'll make sure I send you one if you have not. So, by the way, yeah, if you're interested in judging science fair, mm -hmm. yeah. and they give free lunch. Yeah. <laughs> it's made by Betsy's Culinary what, what School. What is it? Sorry, I just do not know. Science fair. I love science it. fair. What oh. it? So it's okay. basically students from all levels um, present their work to judges, um, oh. and they're put into categories yeah. and that kind of thing. We've had some make it from here all the way to the International mm -hmm. Science Fair. So mm -hmm. sorry, usually there are smart students. You, know, yes. you can do it. I can, I can come to the lab. I was trying to see the dates, up. but um, I, I have, I have a paper that you can fax to oh, sure. Tim Carson and BBC. Oh, that would love to hear from you. He, he needs as many. And more judges he has from the science field, the better. Oh, absolutely. That's great. Yeah, I, I, I judged a few years ago for elementary school, but I'd love to do it again. We and it's regional. We never got an email. Yeah, it was yeah. the regional one, and we just never got and, an email. And that's the one that I'm talking about as well, yeah. and they just sent it out, so it may have just got lost in translation, but I'll make sure. I can get you. I'll send it to him. Oh, okay. I'll, yeah. I, have, I have a ladder, yeah. physically. You know, I would love to judge that again. It was they would love fun. to have you. <laughs> I can assure you, they always be judges. So. <laughs> So you know, if you guys interested, judge, I, I have to get out of school. The only thing it takes a fair amount of time. Yeah, it, it takes about it's, four or five hours. Yeah, to get it morning, you know, through morning. <coughs> then you would. But they would like to have you guys, and with your expertise, I could say, judge high school. You mm -hmm. know, um, I can't because of the you know impartiality mm -hmm. that I have. So I would have to judge the little ones, which is fine. <coughs> they do um, cute projects. They do. It's impossible. It's all about science. <laughs> it's impossible to judge them. Because they're absolutely. all so sweet. They, they're they're so up. adorable. Yeah. Yeah. They just want to do. Um, Y'all all will. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. And the and, and first time I did that, and I had two judges from BBC, and they were experienced. They were brutal. <laughs> they didn't have proper controls. They didn't have proper statistics. Are you kidding me? They were fourth <laughs> grades. Yeah, the <laughs> the they're growing old on bread. It's okay. <laughs> That's why you, yeah, as a judge, you go in and just encourage and say, hey, maybe what could you do different next time? Those kind of questions, you know. But, but yeah, that's another, that's a great thing to put on. Yeah, I'll get, I'll I'll get you. Mm -hmm. I'll, I, have, yeah. I have, I have, I just put it in a folder now. Can, can we be like um, mentors for some scientific projects? Absolutely. Our side, kids we would love it. help kids organize the date. All of our senior, all of our honor students in Bossier Parish have to do a science fair project. Mm -hmm. Not an option. They would love the help. We would love for you to help them because mm -hmm. their mom and daddy only know so much, and the rest they're getting yeah. along. I mean, we know that, mm -hmm. you know. So yes, that would be wonderful. Wonderful. I think in this case, you will have to talk to if it's if it's the help here. Yeah. You have to talk to your boss. To your mentor, sure. Yeah. sure. But like she said, no. it could be one of those meetings just to say, okay, what are you yeah. thinking about setting up? Let me, you can do what I can't do with all 20, you know, mm -hmm. and that's to provide yeah. that. Just prepare a poster to show how to do it, I'm how to do it, the awesome. what they are studying. Yeah, sure. Just have to do And some of them just need an idea. And you can help them brainstorm ideas about it. Because they really, most of them want to do something that matters. They really do. Mm -hmm. They just yeah. don't know how to start. Or, hey, I want to see if this cures cancer. Well, that's kind of 
Yeah, yeah. You can't really test that and find that out yet. So let's yeah, give you some You know, you can have them formulating a really solid idea, right. especially mm -hmm. in high school. Switch it around because they they either have help and they think way out of the box, yeah. or it's so simple mm -hmm. that it's a waste of time. Oh, like, I mean, I have students ask me, I'm like, oh yeah, there's people out there that help. So pretty much, pretty much, what we can do, we can walk in the school. Well. Yeah, and um, and then we can just say, you know, we willing to help. Even kids. school science fairs, you know, it's kind of yeah. beyond that now. But next year, yeah. they would, you know, they love it. Yeah, you enough. could even you could even offer and say, hey, we would love to come in as a group mm -hmm. and take care of your judging. What can we do? And they would, the teachers would just be thrilled. Oh, so, yeah. so when is the the school? The school science, science fairs are school? typically. January. Um, now or January. Okay. I mean, December now or January. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and high school, of, last sorry. week, last week of January, okay. elementary. In the high school level, since we have two terms, uh -huh. they take all their classes in one term and then take another four. You know. Okay. Yeah. So it's different. So we had our uh, original in December, and then we have another one, and it's even after regionals. Okay. If they're interested, they you know accelerate it and get it done more quicker. The paperwork has to be under regionals by February 14th, so okay. every year it will be prior to that. Well, I, I think that judging for science fairs are really good. Yeah, good study. Yeah, it's, I'll tell you what, that's a great good. way to make connections with teachers, it too, because yeah. while you're there, you can say, hey, let me tell you what I do and what we're thinking about doing and that kind of thing. And, and I know people, things. people, faculty from here mm -hmm. who do science fair judging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Cat Magnet's very, very um, competitive. At the school level, yeah. on mine they're like, do we have to go? Mm -hmm. That's the difference in attitude. So there, I mean, I had a, a smart student that, that sent me an email and said, "Oh my gosh, me and Anna got first in our categories." I mean, they were so excited at a school level just because yeah. it's that competitive. At Parkway, it's literally, "Will you please go? Your project was really good. And you kind of <laughs> like for you to show off." What, so it's just a you know a difference in culture is the best way to put it. So. Um, but that would be a good one to, to start, you know. And um, like I said, as many teacher connections as you can make, the more ideas that they can give you, the more involved you can get in the schools and that kind of thing. Because um, then they can put a name in the face and, and that kind of thing. But I'll do whatever I can do on my side. And especially with, I'll see Jan on Monday. We might even can run up here and talk to you real quick. But she's the science coordinator for Caldo uh, Parish. And she's relatively new, you know, to the position, so she might, as an ex science teacher, she might have some good ideas as well, or maybe needs. Can you tell us more about the Aspire program with the OCS? Um, I can send you a list of the labs that they do, just to give you an idea. Um, I know it's Brian Salvatore, okay. Salvatore, okay. Um, Dr. Salvatore. He does the, um, has anybody had him? <laughs> we say Salvatore. Um, he is the one in charge of it, okay. and so I could um, kind of send him your, or give you his information, uh, email us, and you can ask him a little bit more about it. I was up here, ju not judging, but uh, practicing for um, SMART the day that he came to talk to the, the chemistry teachers, so they're a little bit more familiar with it. Okay. Um, but essentially, it's an after-school program that tries to get the kids interested in, in further. And this is at LSUS? LSUS is the group of, I want to say that he uses probably even undergrads. Yeah. And I mean, TAs and different things in the labs mm -hmm. and stuff to go out and do the same okay. thing, community outreach type stuff. Cool. Um, and we were supposed to build a rocket on Tuesday. I was not there. I know the weather was really, really cold, so I'm not going to build a rocket anyway. Well, they're 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 Wednesday. Do cancer. <laughs> right. Do cancer on Wednesday. There's yeah, cancer. Just cancer Wednesday. <laughs> there's <laughs> transformation labs. You know where you can actually do the plasmids and uptake it. I can't do that either. <laughs> 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 see, you can it's come. My alley. <laughs> you can come see that with my advanced biology lab. Mm -hmm. as your community yeah. outreach. It doesn't always work for me. I try really hard, but it doesn't always work. <laughs> Um, like 85% of That's because it's yeah, magic. It is magic. <laughs> it's keeping that calcium chloride really cold or whatever you have to do. Mm -hmm. But um, the more, you know, the more you know, teachers you meet, even through a spire and that kind of thing, um, 
we just we just told students, hey, if you're interested in science and lab, stay after school. And we have you know 20, 30 kids. They're like, oh, yeah, that's a really good turnout. I mean, we have um, we have a 3D printer at Parkway. We have really? phenomenal engineers. Wow. Yes. My boss has been trying to get one of those for like two years. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so it's through NASA and through a really cool grant. Our engineering program is amazing. We have a cyber command group that's top 14 in the nation that does all kinds of. Um, it's cyber patriot stuff. I mean, it's you know they get a problem and they have to deal with it, and it's really cool. amazing. It's really we cool. have robotics. We yeah. have you know lots of different sciences. It's not all biology. That's all I think about. But um, <laughs> there are other things out there, you know. And so uh, a lot of it's just what interests you. Cool. So if we Google Aspire into LSU as well, yeah, probably yes, right. because I know they do it at Southwood. Okay. I'm, I'm almost positive it's Southwood. The other school that they've been in, that they've been working with, um, this kind of thing where they get the students to stay. Um, like I said, that's after school, but it's you know it could be during or after or whatever. It's just a matter of making sure you have an audience. You don't want to come and not have anybody there. So. Um, and I can't remember what it, what it stands for. Got too many acronyms. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I'll get you. Uh, I mean, I can give you Curtis Smith's email address now for Bipsy, but it's just curtis.smith at bozierschools.org. That'll be the Bozier Bear side. And then um, I, I might can talk Jan into just coming up here with me on because um, we're talking about smart programming and some other things on Monday. I just took a day off of school to do all my smart stuff. I have to do that every once in a while. So we'll be meeting, and if I can get her up here, we can put a name in the face together. Next Monday? Mm -hmm. The third. The third. Yeah. I could just call first day for her or see if she's even, she may not have time in her schedule either. But for me, um, the best way to communicate with me is to email. That's. Mm -hmm. Mine too. I look at it. I have first block off, so right. most of the time I read it by nine. Right. After that, it's hit or miss if I get it by the next day. If I have time after school, I sit and read again. But, so. mm -hmm. Sounds we good. love it. Anything that we can do. Tours here, and they don't look, you know, kindly on it, but that's how we got kids in the SMART program for a while, is we would bring a group of students, two or three, four from each school, but a lot of us bring them up here, have guest speakers, and let them walk around the labs and see what's here. And the students either are like, oh my gosh, this is so cool, I'm going to be here, or, you know, but you, you know, you don't know unless you get them here. Oh, yeah. And so a couple of years ago, they took the old... <laughs> <laughs> they on any tours. Ooh. We had a hard time with that. Um, the the BRF or yes. oh, okay. yeah, I'm not. It's not even the BRF names. as much as it was. Safe jobs. Probably. I don't know. I can, uh, can talk. To them. Yeah. Yeah. We had a tour of high school students come through last spring. So well, I'll be bringing my kids through May, whatever it is. Yeah. So okay. That that may have been what you saw as more students. And that is mandatory. If they want to be in the SMART program, they have got to get up here and look at a lab and see what it's like. And do not waste my time applying. If you don't want to be here, you know, in, in and out. And most of them come and just eat it up. Some of them come and go, oh, what was I thinking? <laughs> so that's what we want to do before they ever sit down in the interview process. We want to make sure they like it. So that's early, early March. Um, so they do let us do that still. I mean, I don't even ask. Do that. <laughs> I'm like, no, we're doing that. But other groups, you know, like I said, either that might be another opportunity that we see. So we have to work. Because y'all just have cool equipment that we don't have. Microscopes. <laughs> 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 I mean, <laughs> okay, well, the facility. <laughs> Go to the second floor and stuff like that. And <laughs> see all the cool stuff. Uh, I've interacted with a couple of the Smarties, and mm -hmm. they're really the group kids. So. Yeah. They're still high schoolers, you got to remember that, but yes, they are. For the most part, they're active. Right. They're, um, at this time, got senioritis, so keep <laughs> yeah. in, you know, who doesn't? But, um, and, you know, for them, from November on, is all about where am I going to go to school, I've got to get scholarships, i got to apply here, you know, so in the summer, they're all going home when it comes to research, and then you kind of lose them a little bit as, as they go on, and we know that, you know. We've, after working 40 hours a week for seven weeks, we pretty much, you know, have, have a lot done that we need to get done. Um, and there's competitions, you know, that they can handle and, and that kind of thing. So we try to um, let them take their horns where they can, but it's not about that. 
you know, it's about the experience. Like you said, if y'all would have done this in high school, you know, you would have known then not to <laughs> major in whatever you major in first. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> And you may not have gone to say it. You may have gone, like, what was I thinking? Yes. Yeah, I have to go. I have to say that. Okay. Yeah, well, it's so good to meet all y'all. And um, I'll send you information on the just email addresses for Curtis and for Jan, so you'll have kind of a jump off point. But anytime you want to meet them or come over to Parkway and look around or whatever, y'all just call them on the um, With other, like I said, middle schools and, and the areas. South Bowser is very close knit. We all know each other, so um, you know if you want to start out on the team, go up and do that as well. All right. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you. Thank you.